concept in statistical quality control which is known as the acceptance sampling and the OC curve which is uh, one of the widely used methods in the statistical quality control right so by now we have discussed so many concepts on uh, statistical control charts and we have uh, discussed about the history of statistical quality control so today we are going to discuss about this acceptance sampling technique right so what happens here is uh, what is this acceptance sampling basically it is a technique of deciding whether to accept a given lot based on a number of predefined defectives that is for an example let's say uh, you are having a factory which is manufacturing uh, let's say a garment so if you are manufacturing let's say thousand units per day and if you are going to sell these thousand units to a uh, seller so if you, the seller should decide whether to buy this lot or not so in that case actually you cannot just uh, search for all the thousand units and decide whether you are going to buy this lot or not so what you can do it basically you can take a sample and test the sample and then get into the conclusion whether you are going to buy the whole lot or not so that's what we are doing in this uh, acceptance sampling so uh, when you have a a big lot you take a sample uh, at random and then you check the sample units and count the number of defectives and then you calculate the and then uh, before you uh, obtain the sample actually we have a predefined value let's say when you uh, check the whole sample if the number of defectives are less than O equal to 3 we are going to accept the whole lot likewise whether the number of defective is equal to 3 or 2 or 1 that we have to predefine right so based on that we are going to take the decision whether to accept the lot or whether to reject the lot right so actually it's a process of ensuring the customer that the lot uh, meant for sale does not contain any defective products that is when you test uh, the whole lot by taking a sample we are given we are giving a guarantee to our customer that is uh, our whole lot is in a good standard right our whole lot uh, this sample is a representation of our whole lot right so actually this acceptance sampling is something that we widely use in our day-to-day -day life just uh, imagine that you are going to buy some food product something like rice so when you go to the food city or when you go to the shop you do, if you want to buy uh, five kilograms right you just check whether it's in good stand and by taking a small amount you don't ch just check the uh, uh, all five kilograms and get into the conclusion that you are going to buy this rice right so likewise when you are uh, buying uh, vegetables right when you are buying flour so in all these uh, scenarios we are actually uh, using this acceptance sampling technique in order to get into the conclusion whether we are going to buy this product or not okay so why actually we are using this acceptance sampling because uh, there are many reasons for using this acceptance sampling right one reason is uh, if you if the product is in the destructive nature that is uh, imagine that you are going to buy thousand uh, glass sheets right so in that case if you are going to check all the thousand glass sheets and get into the conclusion whether you are going to buy all these thousand or not right it's very dangerous because we know glass is something very fragile so it takes long time and if you are going to check all these thousand so while you are doing the inspection it may get uh, broken as well 
right so because of that it's always better to go for a sample so if your product is in the destructive nature and also it's very time consuming and it's very costly to do the inspection with the whole lot so due to these reasons we always go for acceptance sampling right so if you are going to buy as i mentioned thousand glass sheets what we can do is we can simply take a sample of 50 units right and then we can get into our conclusion let's say when you check all these 50 glass shades if you find zero defectives that is if all the 50 glass shades are in a good standard of course you can accept the whole lot we can accept the sample that is we can accept the whole lot or else let's say we, we found only one defective only one glass sheet is uh, a defective one in that case also we let's say we are going to accept the whole lot and let's say we are we find um, two defectives let's say in that case also we are going to accept the whole lot and if you find three defectives what we are going to do is we are going to reject the entire lot that is what we did was we are we were planning to buy thousand glass sheets and we took a sample of 50 items and then we check one by one right and then if you can find uh, two or less than two number of defectives we say the whole lot is in a good condition and we are going to accept the whole lot if not that is if you can find more than two defectives in the sample that you have obtained what we are going to do is we are going to reject the whole lot that's what we are doing in this acceptance sampling so when it comes to acceptance sampling there are some uh, notations that you have to know right so that is we should know what is the population size so the lot size which is denoted by capital n so in this example that we discussed we were having thousand uh, glass sheets so that is the lot size where the capital n value is equal to thousand and we obtain a sample of 50 so sample size is denoted by simple n so in this case sample size is equal to 50 and then uh, simple c so simple c is the predefined number that is uh, how we are we are going to take our decision based on this simple c value so in this case we have decided if we find less than or equal to two number of defectives we are going to accept the whole lot so this two is known as the c value so that we have to predefine whether we are going to accept up to two defectives three defectives four defectives or only up to one defective that number you have to predefine so that is known as the uh, C value and based on C value our sample scheme will be different right so and simple D value is the number of defectives you have in your sample so when you take the 50 units we can find we can count the number of defectives we have within our 50 units and that is denoted by 3 so based on this example what we do is what we did here was we uh, met three defectives right let's say we we found three defectives so since our c value is equal to two that is we have found more defectives right than our sampling scheme so we are going to reject the whole lot so what we do is when we are doing when we are performing the acceptance sampling so we can compare this d value and the c value that is we can compare the number of defectives we can find in a sample with this predefined c value so if the number of defectives are less than or equal to c we are going to accept the whole lot if the number of defectives are greater than c then we are going to reject the whole lot right so uh, the, in this case we can understand there is always a probability associated with this right if we want we can find out the probability of accepting the lot or probability of rejecting the lot right so we can what we can understand here is when you take a lot 
if uh, you have if the number of defectives if you have few number of defectives in a given lot then you have a high probability to accept that lot right since we are counting the number of defectives in in a given sample if you have very few defectives in the whole lot there is a high probability to accept the whole lot okay so in this case uh, in acceptance sampling what we always do is we are taking only two decisions that is whether to accept or reject the lot right so based on these standards that is we have to consider what is the lot size capital n what is the sample size simple n what is the acceptance number that is simple c that you have to predefine and the number of defectives you have to count based on your sample if the number of defectives are less than or equal to simple c then we are going to accept the lot if the number of defectives are greater than simple c we are going to reject the lot right so in this case actually uh, now let's say uh, you uh, have a sample uh, you have a lot of thousand items and we are going to obtain a sample of 50 so let's say actually in the whole lot there are only three defectives right so but when you take the sample from your lot you have received all these three defectives to your sample and if our acceptance number is 2 that is c value is 2 when you are counting the number of items in your sample now you have three defectives so our acceptance number is 2 so what we are going to do is we are going to reject the whole lot but actually if there are only three uh, defectives in the whole lot it is actually a good lot right all the other 997 items are in a good standard right so actually what we have done is we have taken the wrong decision okay and on the other hand let's say uh, there are uh, let's say 900 defectives in your lot and when you take the sample you have obtained all the good units all the non-defective units to your sample so when you are counting when you inspect your sample you find no defective so zero defective so we are getting to the conclusion to accept the lot but in the lot there are uh, so many the majority of uh, the units are non-confirming or the defective so in that case also we have taken the wrong decision so when you are doing acceptance sampling there are two uh, possible errors that is sometimes we may reject a good lot or sometimes we may accept a bad lot all right so these two concepts are important that is if you are going to reject a good lot right so actually that is a risk which is coming from the producer's side right if the customer is going to reject your lot even though it's in good standard so that is a risk which you have to face as the producer so we call it as the producer's risk in uh, uh, acceptance sampling uh, that is rejecting a good lot rejecting a lot which is in a good standard so in acceptance sampling we call this as type 1 error and as uh, the usual notations we denoted that by uh, alpha right the probability of type 1 error is denoted by alpha so uh, when you talk about the other error type as I told you that is uh, accepting a bad lot so if you are the customer or if you are the consumer if you have accepted a bad lot that is something not good for you right so that risk is coming to the customer or to the consumer Okay, so we call it as the consumer's risk, which is associated with the consumer by accepting a lot which is 
not in a good stand. So when you calculate the probability of accepting a bad lot, we uh, use the notation as the usual notation beta. That is the probability of accepting a bad lot or the probability of the consumer's risk is denoted by beta and the probability of producer's risk is denoted by alpha. So in this case, uh, when it comes to uh, acceptance sampling, there are another two techniques which is very important. One technique is known as the AQL, which is known as acceptance quality level, right? That is the percentage of defects at which consumer is willing to accept the lot as good, right? Now, if you, bear, if you talk about, if I take the same example that we talk about, so there are 1,000 units in the whole lot and we take a sample of 50 and if there are two or less than two number of defectives, customer is okay to buy the lot. So the maximum value that is two, that the customer has been agreed with the producer to buy the lot, right, even though there are two number of defectives in the sample. So this, uh, when you take the uh, probability, of accepting the lot even when you even have two number of defectives that we call as AQL, right? The acceptance quality level, that is the percentage of the defectives at which consumer is willing to accept. That's the percentage that is not actually a, a probability. When you calculate the probability of that, you can denote it by alpha, but that percentage of defectives, you can take it as uh, you can take the percentage of defective value as uh, AQL. And in the other case, we have something known as RQL, which is known as the rejectable quality level. So the rejectable quality level is the highest defective rate or the defective rate that the customer is willing to tolerate in an individual lot right so that is the rql is always describes what sampling plan will reject and the aql describes what the sampling plan will accept right so sometimes the customer will tolerate up to this much of defectives that you can just talk and negotiate so that level that the maximum level that the customer is going to tolerate the maximum number of defectives that the customer is going to tolerate is no uh, is denoted by rql right and if you calculate the probability of that we can denote the probability of that uh, using beta right so actually the rql is the upper limit uh, of percentage defectives at which the consumer is willing to accept the lot, right? So actually in this case, now we can see when you use the acceptance sampling, we can always talk about a probability. Sometimes the lot will get accept, sometimes the lot will get reject. So we can always calculate the probability of accepting, rejecting, in these different different scenarios so based on these uh, number of defectives and uh, the probability of accepting a given lot you can construct the operating characteristic curve which is known as the oc curve which is highly used in the field of statistical quality control so you here you can see it's a graph uh, between the percentage of the defectives in the lot and against the probability of acceptance the sample right now in this case let's say uh, if you can see this graph you can see the aql is somewhere here let's say the aql value is equal to 0.1 right so that is when the percentage of defectives is equal to 0.1 we can calculate the probability of accepting the lot right let's say the probability of accepting the lot is somewhere close to 0.9
right so when there are point uh, one percentage of defectives in the whole lot there is a probability that is there are only few defectives so there is a high probability to accept the whole lot so that probability is equal to point nine so if accepting probability is equal to 0.9, so the complement will give you the rejecting probability. So that is you have to subtract this probability from 1. That is 1 minus 0.9 which is equal to 0.1. So actually it's this difference. You can see that difference. So if, if the percentage of defectives is equal to 0.1, that is it's a good lot. So you can see in a good lot, uh, if you are going to reject a good lot, that is a risk for the producer. So this gap will give you the producer's risk, right, which is denoted by alpha, right. On the other hand, if uh, let's say uh, when it comes to the percentage of defectives in the lot, let's say it's 0 0.6, right, in that case still the consumer is going to accept the whole lot. So if the uh, number of defectives in the percentage of defectives in the whole lot is equal to 0.6 and then we can calculate the probability of accepting the lot. So you can see from the graph it's somewhere close to 0.1. Right? So we know point if there are 0.6 percentage of defectives in the whole lot that is there is a high number of defectives in the lot. Right? So of course the accepting probability should be lower right so that's why it's close to 0.1 so if the accepting probability is 0.1 the complement will give you the rejecting probability that is 1 minus 0.1 somewhere close to 0.9 so that is actually right so in this case actually when it comes to accepting a bad lot it's a risk for the consumer. So this one accepting the bad lot probability which is close to 0 0.1 is denoted by the consumer's risk. Right? So we can construct this OC curves based on a uh, lot size and the defective percentage. Right? And construct the OC curves. So when it comes to this acceptance sampling, when you want to calculate the probability of acceptance, acceptance we are using the binomial distribution why when you have a sample of 50 you are we are going to inspect one by one in a sample and find out whether it's a defective or not and count the number of defective so it's like if it's a defective we count it as a success so any item have two outcomes whether it's a success or a failure that is whether it's a defective or not Right? And there are fixed number of items since we are inspecting only a given sample. If the sample size is 50, we are going to inspect only the 50 items. Right, So you can see all the binomial characteristics there. So because of that, to calculate the acceptance probability, we are going to use the binomial equation. And in that case, if you are going to uh, calculate the rejecting probability, we can first calculate the acceptance probability and then take the complement of that. Right? So let's see how to calculate these probabilities based on this example. Let's say we want to calculate the probability that a lot with 1% of defectives, that is the percentage of defectives in the lot, will be accepted under a single sampling scheme defined by n equal 50 and c equal 2. So actually when it comes to the acceptance sampling, uh, we really don't want the uh, lot size for the calculations but we want the lot, lot size when we have to decide the sample size right but for the calculations we don't want it so let's say there is a lot we don't know about the lot size but they have they want to take a sample of 50 and the c value is equal to 2 and the percentage of defectives is equal to 1% so we want to calculate the probability of accepting 
this sample. So in this case, what we do is we have to obtain a sample of 50 and then we check all the 50 units and we count the number of defectives. It can be any number from 0 to 50 because all the units can be uh, not defectives. In that case, the defectives will be equal to 0. If all the units that we have taken to the sample uh, are defectives, then the number of defectives will be equal to 50 or it can be any number in between 0 and 50. Right? So, we are going to count the number of defectives there and then we are going to calculate the probability of accepting. So, what we do is if the number of defectives that we have counted is less than or equal to 2, we are going to accept it. If not, we are going to reject the whole lot. That is, if you uh, have found zero defectives, we accept. One defective, we accept. Two defectives, we accept. But if you, let's say, if you have found five defectives, it's greater than two. So, we are going to reject the whole lot. So, in this case, we can actually calculate the probability of accepting the lot. So, what you have to do is we have to use the uh, binomial distribution. So, since the now in this case the percentage value is equal to uh, 1%, right? And then when it comes to n value is equal to 50, and then c value is equal to 2. So, the probability of acceptance I have denoted by PA. So, if x is the number of defectives. If x is equal to number of defectives, that is, if the number of defectives is equal to 0, we are going to accept. And if the number of defectives is equal to 1, we are going to accept. If it is equal to 2, we are going to accept. If not, we are going to reject. So, since we are going to calculate the probability of accepting, the whole lot, we have to calculate the probability when x equal to 2, 1 and 0. So, that is the probability where x is less than or equal to 2. So, we have to take the binomial equation and we know the n value is equal to 50. So, you can substitute the n value here. Right? So, in this case, you can substitute the n value as 50 and then you can uh, find the probability when x equal to uh, 0 because p value is also 1% that is 0 0.01 the probability of a success and then when you can substitute the x value as 0, 1 and 2 then you can take the summation of all three probabilities. You can just give it a try. You will see you will get the probability as 0. 9, 8. So, you can use the binomial uh, distribution you know, to calculate the probability of acceptance, right? So, you can see how easy it is to calculate using this value. So, if I go back to the slides, now if you take this curve here, right? So, now it's somewhere the the percentage of defective is somewhere here that is 0.1 and the acceptance probability you can plot it somewhere close to 0.98 right somewhere close to here okay so likewise we can calculate the probabilities if we are given with the percentage of the defectives in the lot and if you know the n value right and the uh, sample size you can calculate. So, you will see if you take the same C value and if you take different sample sizes that, that is now let's say our lot size is 1000 and we are going to keep the C value as 2 but we are going to uh, increase the sample size. Right. So, in that case, if you are going to increase the sample size, if you look at this first graph, you can see uh, if you observe the probabilities, there is a drop in the probabilities when we increase the sample size. Right. So, that is the 
there is a drop means the producer's risk will decrease and then the consumer's risk will increase why the producer's risk means we are going to accept we are going to reject a good lot okay and the consumer's risk is we are going to accept a bad lot so when we increase the number of uh, items that we are going to obtain when we increase the sample size and when the percentage of the defectives is the same right so there is actually a probability to find uh, less number of defectives in a given sample since the sample size is big so if you find less number of defectives we are going to anyway accept our sample that is uh, eventually we are going to accept the whole lot right so that is when we increase the sample size there is high probability to accept so if we are going to accept it's good for the producer the producers risk will decrease right but it's not good for the consumer because if it's a bad lot again we will accept it so you can see what happens to the OC curve when we increase the sample size, right? It's, uh, there is a drop in the OC curve that is the producer's risk will in decrease but the consumer's risk will increase, right? You can see, let's say the lot, lot percent defectives is somewhere here between 5 and 10. So you can see if you draw a straight line like this you can find out the respective probabilities for the same percentage of defectives then you can see there is less probability right uh, right so you can see there is less probability here okay so that is the pr uh, producer's risk will decrease and the consumer's risk will increase in the first case right and then when it comes to the next one we can see uh, in the next case we can see actually what has happened there so we have taken the same sample same sample size but in that case what we have done is we have taken the same sample size but we have changed the c value right so you can see if the c value is high that is, we are going to accept more uh, defectives to our sample. So, anyway, that there is a high probability to accept the sample, right? So, that is why when the C value is high, there is a high probability to accept the sample, okay? So, in that case, you can see the OC curve has moved upward, right? So, OC curve has moved upward. Uh, when we are changing the C value. Okay. So, so actually when it comes to the ideal case, the ideal OC curve is something like this. Because when it comes to the perfect scenario, we uh, have a predefined lot defective percentage, right? If we consider that value if the number of uh, defectives are less than or that we are going to accept or else we reject. So let's say the lot percent defective here is equal to 1. If it is equal to 1 we are going to accept. So the acceptance probability is 1 or else in all the other cases we are going to reject. So that is the acceptance probability is 0. Okay. So in this case we can see the acceptance probability is 0. So, this is the ideal OC curve. But we never get this ideal OC curve because we have this uh, the AQL and we have this RQL values, right? Because there is always a percentage of defects at which consumer is willing to accept and which uh, the, the rejectable quality level, it is the 
tolerance percentage of the defective so because of these two we will never get this perfect condition right so but if you ask to draw the perfect condition of the OC curve it should be like this right in this case actually uh, now you can see if you just uh, look at the first right so you can see uh, if you look at this one so this is the producers risk right and this is the consumers risk when you observe the second one right so the second case you can see if you just check let's say this one right if you just check this one you can see uh, if the actual percentage of defective is equal to 5 you can see in that case the consumers uh, the consumers risk is decreasing because there's a small gap between this uh, when it equal to 6 the defective percentage is equal to 6 you can see the probability is very close to uh, 0 right so there is only a gap between 0 uh, 0 and let's say this is close to uh, 0.1 right so the gap would be 0.1 you can see the consumers risk will be decreased in the second graph right where that is the uh, opposite in the first graph so when you change or when you increase the c value the producers risk will increase but the consumers risk will decrease right so when it comes to this acceptance sampling there are the, uh, different different uh, categories right so uh, basically we have uh, single sampling plans where what we do is you have a big lot and we are going to uh, obtain a single sample from the lot and we are going to count the number of defectives in the single sample and then based on the number of defectives and the predefined c value we are going to take the decision whether we are going to accept the lot or reject the lot so that is what we discuss here right which is known as the single sampling plans right so as i told you here you have uh, dictates a certain number of pieces that is the sample size is fixed and then uh, in this case uh, what you have to remember is if the number of defects is under the aql limit the result is passed right that is we take the sample from the lot we check uh, the number of defectives and then if the number of defectives are greater than or equal, uh, greater than the c value we reject the lot or else if it is less than that value we are going to uh, accept the lot and saying it's uh, by saying it's a good lot right and then you have double sampling schemes right so that is uh, in this case what we do is there also we have a lot first we take a small sample and then inspect it right and then uh, if the number of defectives in the small sample is above a predefined value right then we are going for another sample for an example let's say uh, first we uh, obtain a sample from the lot and if the number of defectives in the first sample is greater than three we are going to go we are going to uh, obtain another sample from the lot if it is less than uh, or equal to 3 we are going to accept the lot right so likewise we go for two samples so that's what we are doing in the double sampling plan so when you go for the second sample again we have predefined values that is we have a predefined c value for the second sample when you obtain the second sample let's say if you have um, less than or equal to two number of defectives we are going to accept the whole lot or we are going to reject right so that's what we do in the double sample so we have multiple sample plans also multiple sampling plans so it, it's actually a kind of extension of the double sampling right 
So we take one sample, count the number of defectives. If it is less than a predefined value, we are going to accept the lot. If it is greater than a value, we are going to go for a second sample. We do the same thing for the second sample. Inspect the number of defectives. If it is less than or equal to a predefined value, we accept the whole lot. If it is greater than the predefined value, we go for a Another sample, likewise, we can go up to k number of successive samples uh, uh, until we reach an ultimate, uh, until we reach uh, into an ultimate decision, right? So, we uh, draw multiple samples, many samples. That's why we call this as multiple sampling scheme, right? Mm. And... Uh, So in this case, right, if you are going to use the multiple sampling uh, scheme, right, sometimes the acceptance is not allowed in the early stages of the multiple sampling. That is, by if you are going to use the multiple sampling scheme, you cannot make the decision that you are going to accept the whole lot by taking only one sample because it cannot be if you take only one sample and if you, you take the decision, it will be single sampling scheme. If you take only two decisions, uh, two samples and make the decision, it will be the double sampling scheme, right? So because of that, the acceptance is not allowed in most of the time at the early stages, but the rejection, right, rejection can occur at the early stages because if you reject, you can go for more samples. So rejection is possible, but there is a re restriction in acceptance. So, there is another sampling scheme which is known as the sequential sampling scheme. So, this is a non-probabilistic sampling scheme, right? So, it is actually initially developed as a, a tool in the quality control. And in this case, the sample size, that is uh, the number of units that we are going to draw from the lot, that is not fixed, right? That is not a predefined value, right? So, we begin the process uh, then we first uh, what we do is the process begins first with the sampling of a single observation or a group of observations right that is when you begin the sequential sampling plan sometimes you may take only one unit or you may take a group of units from your lot right and then we inspect them right and then we uh, get into the conclusion whether we are going to accept the whole lot or not if we cannot get into the conclusion what we do is we again uh, obtain another unit or a group of units from our lot and then again we test it right and likewise we are going to take uh, units or a group of units from our lot continuously until we are confident with our decision whether to accept or reject our lot. So actually it's not a probabilistic method, right? So it's a uh, it's just as a tool you can use uh, in order to uh, get into the conclusion whether you are going to accept or reject a lot. So these are the sampling schemes that we uh, have to uh, discuss under acceptance sampling. But most of, in most of the courses in this case, in this module, we are going to, for the calculations, we are going to uh, stick into the single sampling scheme. Right? So I hope you understand the concept of acceptance sampling and the OC curve and why it is important and why we are using the acceptance sampling, right? Uh, the advantages because it's uh, not time consuming, right? It's not that expensive because if you are going to inspect the whole lot, it's very costly. Right, and if the objects are in destructive nature, you can apply the acceptance sampling. But on the other hand, there are two disadvantages because there is a chance to reject a good lot, which is known as the type 1 error, the producer's risk, and also there is uh, another risk that is the consumer's risk to accept a bad lot, right? Uh, even though there are these advantages and disadvantages, so in 
everything you have pros and cons but this uh, acceptance sampling is something that we widely use in the field of statistical quality control so we will discuss more about this OC curves in the coming lectures right so I hope you understand and if you have any questions you can write to me thank you very much